we'll be looking right at naming ionic compounds, but first a word from one of our national treasures. Are you ready for some chemistry? Yeah! Well, not really. Let's look at some common ionic periodic trends. If we look at positive 1 ions, we would see them coming from group 1 on the periodic table. They would include metals like lithium, sodium, potassium, all plus 1. Hydrogen's over there as well. It's not really a part of group 1, but it has a positive 1 charge. Let's look at positive 2 ions. These would include metals as well, such as magnesium, calcium, barium, all plus two. Let's not forget that these cations are atoms that have lost electrons. Let's look at positive three ions, flipping across the periodic table to group th 13. They lose three electrons. Most typical of, the, of these would be aluminum ion plus three. Looking at negative one ions, these would largely come from group 17, where these atoms have become negative one anions by gaining one electron from somewhere. Take, for instance, the atom fluorine. By gaining an electron, it becomes the fluoride ion, negative one charge. Let's look at other common negative one anions of group 17, chloride and bromide and iodide. These are also known as the halogens. Negative two ions. These would be group 16. The oxygen group, oxide and sulfide would be typical. Negative three ions next to them in group 15 would include nitride and phosphide. Let's look at cations with two common charges. These cations come from the middle of the periodic table. You could call them variable charge cations. They're all metals. Let's look at two ways of naming. The old system, you would take the root of the ancient name, in this case ferrium for iron. The suffix or ending would be us or ick. Us for the lower positive charge, ick for the higher charge involved. If you use the newer system, the stock system, you start with the name of the element. You end with the positive charge written as a Roman numeral in parentheses. So let's look at our example, iron. Iron plus two would be iron two with the stock system, ferrous. Iron three would be ferric. Copper 1 would be cuprous, copper 2, cupric. Lead plus 2 would be lead 2 or plumbus, lead 4 or plumbic. Now there's a good reason that they invented the stock system. The old system has some issues. The suffixes, us and ick, don't tell you what the charge of the cation is, and you can't balance an ionic formula without that information. Let's take FeCl3. We know that chloride is negative one charge, and there's three of them. So how about the charge for the iron? You just have the one iron ion there. So to balance out the negative three of the three chlorides, this particular cation has to be plus three. Plus three minus three equals a zero net zero charge. So this would be named iron three chloride or ferric chloride. Now we'll examine oxyanions, negative ions with oxygen in them. Common oxyanions would be hydroxide negative one, carbonate CO3 negative two, chromate CRO4 negative two, you name these oxyanions by using eight and ite suffixes. Eight for more oxygen, ite for less oxygen. Sulfate, SO4, has less oxygen than sulfite, SO3. Nitrate, NO3. Nitrite, NO2. 
phosphate, PO4, phosphite, PO3. How would we name CuSO4? What's the charge of the copper in this case? We know that sulfate is negative 2, so that the copper in this case has to be positive 2. Its name in the stock system would be copper 2 sulfate, cupric sulfate using the old system. Okay, how would you name these two? You've got lead involved with both, but Pb with an NO2 times 4, and you've got PbNO3 with four of them as well. So you know that lead has to be plus 4 because nitrite and nitrate are both negative 1 charge, and there's four of them. So the names in the stock system would be lead 4 nitrite, lead 4 nitrate or plumbic nitrite and plumbic nitrate. Okay, let's switch things up. Let's look at this formula, PbNO3 with a 2. You have lead 2 nitrate in this case, or plumbus nitrate. You can see because there's just two nitrates in this one that the lead is plus 2. Okay, it wouldn't kill any, any of you to do a little more practice. Let's take a look at SN, NO2 in parentheses with two of them, and see what that would be. Okay, what's the charge on the tin anyway? We know that nitrite has got to be negative 1 all the time. It never changes. Nitrite is negative 1, but you have to know that. So the nitrite represents overall a negative 2 charge, and it's going to have to add up to zero. And you've only got one tin, so the tin, the one tin cation, has to carry all the positive charge. So you've got negative two, so you have to balance that out with a plus two on the tin. Okay, what would the names be? Uh, the tin has a plus 2 charge, so using the stock system, it would be tin 2 nitrite. Again, nitrite is a given. It's, you always know that it's going to be negative 1. The tin is the question mark here. Let's take a look at what the old system name would be. Now, here's a disadvantage. Do you know what the charges are for the variable ion t tin? Maybe not. In this case, it's a lower charge, so it's stannous nitrite. Okay, let's look at another one here. Oh, let's take copper. And we're going to take the name now and work the other direction. We've got a copper 1 in the stock system, so we know that it's copper plus 1 charge with a chloride. Now the chloride we know has got to be negative 1 all the time, so it's not in question. It's the cation here. So how are we going to write the formula? Copper has a plus 1 charge. Chloride, again you know, has a negative 1 charge. So plus 1, minus 1, really all you'd have to do to balance that formula is lose the plus 1 and the minus 1. It would just be CuCl. And from that, you would know it would be copper 1 chloride if you know that you have the balanced formula. How do we name it with the old system? Cuprous chloride. Are you ready to flex some chemistry muscle? Yeah. Yeah, that's right, baby. Well, as usual, the boss chem dude is way over the top, but he's got a good point. If you're going to flex your chemistry muscle, it's being able to do the nomenclature, balance the formulas, speak the jargon. So you've got to practice, practice, and practice some more. That's what you've got to do. Till next time.